when I made some Happy Mail the other day, I put on some embellishments that I'd made from just some, really some watercolour doodles. This is on a dictionary page. So tonight I got on making a few more. So here are the ones that I've made this evening. And this one here. So what I would normally do is just tear them out. So I'm going to show you how to make them. First of all, you can use anything such as old book pages, homework, anything like that. That will all um, make some pretty neat embellishments. And the only thing that you really need is a common or garden biro and a water brush or paint brush and some cheap watercolour paints. These are kids pound shop watercolour paints. You could use uh, watercolour pencils, but to be honest with you, I tend to um, just use the cheaper paints. So first of all, you have to doodle your flowers. And what I tend to do is if I sit down anywhere, I might pick up just a piece of paper and do a quick doodle on it. So depending on how I'm feeling depends on how I do the doodle. But to be honest with you. Usually it is just a very, very quick outline of a flower, like that. Like that. A couple of silly little flowers. Sometimes it's a bit more structured as a flower. Tiny little leaves on this one and maybe we'll put another flower on it as well. Just the way that I'm feeling. This one. They're not accurate, they're not realistic. They don't look anything like real flowers. They're just literally how I doodle. So. Okay, so that's that one. And on here, what I will do is I'll do a nice big round circle. And just a big loopy flower. Okay, so I've got these here. And then literally all I'm going to do is use my watercolours, my cheapy watercolours, to paint these up got a nice cheap water brush as well so first of all I'm just going to take a little bit of the bright green and go over this quite wide and rough like that now I sometimes do more than one like this Depending on and again like this, do it nice and wide round the flower. Now, because these are cheap paints, they do dry quite um, pale. So once I've done that. I choose the colour that I'm going to um, do the leaves and the stalk and I go over the leaves and the stalk and it will blur into the outer watercolour but I quite like that.
Now against the different shades of green you will find that the um, watercolours look a different um, colour. You will find that against the lighter colours maybe the brights look better and against the darker backgrounds the the um, like the bluey tinges tend to that's it and then for the flowers I tend to um, just make up any colour combinations that um, come into my head so first of all I'm going to use a pink and when these watercolours dry they dry quite chalky they, they have quite a chalky um, finish which I quite like so both of these flowers I'm going to do the same colour. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of that pink there. Some of the darker pink around the lines. And then to finish maybe We'll just go around the outside. In the deepest pink of the lot. Just keep cleaning clean my water brush off. There's a bit of white in here, just swirl it around a bit. When they dry as well, they dry very different to how they look when they wet. these watercolour paints really are like the, the, they do have a chalky finish they really are just cheapy paints okay I think we'll just have a bit of um, yellow on this one around here we've got some yellow around there and yellow around the outside of this one now once again i do like to go right around the outside in quite a few different colors let's pop a bit of yellow in here and a bit around the outside like that So quite like this purpley colour, pinky purple. We'll do that around the outside as well. So all the time I just keep using a different colour without too much um, thought in it. Maybe orange. Right, I think that's just about finished. Put that to one side to dry. Finish this one off. We'll just keep um, layering up the colours. That one's nice and bright and cheerful. Leave that to dry, put those to one side to dry. Here are a few more that I've just been doodling up tonight. So that was one that I did earlier on. And there's another one here which just needs colouring in. do like the pink because when the pink dries it dries nice and um, 
chalky. That's the finish that I like. A little bit more pink around that one. And then once again with the green. Oops, that's a bit orange. Let's put a bit of a, a green line in there. Looks almost autumnal, does that? Is that a word? Mm -hmm. Autumnal. Who knows? Let's see. Is it? Mm -hmm. Right, we'll show leave that to dry. Quite like the idea of this one being blue, the one that I did before was a nice blue one so I quite like the idea of this one being a bit like a delphinium I think they call them or a little hyacinth, a blue, a blue hyacinth so I quite like that. I'll just go around the outside with that blue and then a bit darker blue on the inside give it a bit of um, interest as you can see I'm not being overly careful with the um, outlines because I do like this outer colour and uh, sometimes I even go out a bit further now when I come to using these I always tear them off so depending on what I'm going to be putting them on to will depend on how wide I actually tear them off. Um, so I can choose to either tear them near or um, leave quite a gap around them. I'll just uh, finish this one and then I'll just show you um, off camera where I've been cleaning my brush what I tend to do with that. Let's just darken these up a little bit. Put a bit of dark on the leaves. And that's it. And let's leave that one to dry. So where I've been cleaning my brush off, you can see that I've done some sort of swirls on this paper I've done some from previously and um, I've also done them from tonight just now so this is a bit different because I've already got the colours on the page and um, except for the the green I've already got the colour on the page here so from here what I would do is I'll just let that one dry because I've scribbled on it. What I would do on here is from from these brush cleaning circles, I would usually just make these mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. swirly flowers like this. So I would just do them all into just swirly flowers like that. Don't do a lot more um, doodling on these because I don't know, I just think that they look nice as they are. Now what you could do is you could actually, if you wanted to make these into more um, intricate flowers, but I don't, I like them just the way they are. They're what I call my lollipop flowers. And there is that one there which we can actually just put that in and then with our water brush actually just bob a few colours into that one. Any of them we can just go back in and touch them up really but um, I quite like 
space to be quite pale. And as you can see, I use different shades of green for each one. Each one of these will be cut out, so they don't need to be equal. But there you go, very, 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 very quick and um, easy to do. This is the one that we did earlier. I do like the lollipop flowers. something about just doing some flowers if I've been using gesso and um, colours on um, melted books I tend to have a few pages like this to one side and just make lots of swirls on them in different colours and then tear them out and make them into flowers and they look quite nice in tuck spots in journals or um, on birthday cards you know to do some birthday if you want to make some birthday cards you can actually tear out um, these flowers and put them as a background onto some cards they're actually all done and then here are some others that I've done earlier and it is literally just colouring them in one of the other ways that I colour them in is using some watercolour um, pencils and with those you can be a little bit more accurate when you're colouring in. So if you just colour along the lines and then use the water brush to pick up the, the colours then you can get the flowers looking a little bit more um, structured. These are bit like roses or peonies like I say I don't overthink the flowers I don't um, I don't really uh, put a lot of thought into how I want them to look I just tend to scribble and um, hope that they turn out okay with these two different shades of ready pink in them some white um well, some white watercolour and then just start there and go around and what you get is you get quite a nice peony maybe rose looking plant flower and with these two here think a nice bright green stem and there we go nice bright green stem oops Just a bit of green down each side There we go, they really do look different though once they've dried. I've got lots and lots of different um, sketched flowers here and it just depends on um, how I'm feeling as to how I colour them. So sometimes I use the coloured pencils and I just do tend to do circles like this with them. Nothing's precise, nothing is, um, you know, precisely done. And 
and I do like the chalky white that's um, come in these cheap colour pencils. Looks a bit um, peacock blue, does that, doesn't it? I think we'll put some yellow in this one. And then I shall leave you to go and uh, have a go on your own, because... Doing this purely to give you a bit of an idea. I'll do a... bit more precise there and then Sometimes when I do these, I also do cactus plants, I draw cactus plants as well, so that's all green. Um, just basically a strange cactus plant shape. And um, I just draw it how I think it should look. Nothing like a real cactus plant, just a, a basic something similar to one that you could squint your eyes and think oh that looks a bit like a cactus but um, nothing too serious now once i've done these i can also doodle on them with um, some pens so you could also use a white highlighter pen and just dot dot these around i love these two colors together and um, these two colours are usually my favourite and they do fo um, actually feature quite a lot do the pinks and the purples but um, that is just about it love a bit of blue in that one and I think a bit of white as well make it just a nice chalky white that one can stay as it is and we'll have bright green on there and that's it just putting some finishing touches with the white pen I've actually found that there's no real brand of white pen that's no um, any more reliable than the other. To be honest with you, it varies from actual pen to pen. And um, I have like varied look with all of them. But I'm just putting some finishing touches in here. Um, I think I'm going to put some darker lines in the leaves. And I'm just using brown pen like I say I've got no um, no particular preferences I just use what I've got because the watercolours are fairly chalky some pens don't like writing on them but um, I'd say you've just got to use what you've got very hit and miss but Right, this one here. Let's have a go with this white paint pen here, shall we? Once again, I don't use the white paint pens probably often enough for them to remain reliable. Oops, I've got blue watercolour on them. That's one of the other things that the watercolour will move if you wet it again. So um, we did just use cheap watercolour. 
Oh, I need to put some spots on here. Got a spot in the middle. I want that dry. Um, these here. What I might do is I might colour each one of these white spots in round blue to make them clearer. Probably leave that one. This one. Just do a nice curl and ring round. It's all just about doodling until you're happy with it. White dot in the middle of there. A white dot and some white in the middle of each of these. What quite often happens is the pen, the white pen soaks in, so you end up with a nice, just a chalky layer across. And some white on each one of these leaves as well, I think. Okay. And this one here will have a dot in each petal as we go around. And these will just get bobbed into the happy mail as something that people can use when they're sending out. So this is a brand new Posca pen and so these tend to be the better ones and I've got these in all sorts of colours. I'm just going to have that in white like that. like to vary it up a bit. It just varies it up a little bit. I think I might go around the outside of that one as well like right there. Nothing exact about it. Like my husband says to me I'm um, probably one of the least exact people ever. What can we do on this one? Well, I might highlight just a few spots on this one, but I don't really want to do all of them. I might just highlight the ones down the middle. And highlight a few on here. Quite like that. And then this. I like the swirls. Have you noticed that I quite like those swirls? That's all the yellow on my hand. That's off a lily. It's the um, I got some a bunch of flowers for um, Valentine's Day, and the lilies had some bright yellow pollen in. So of course I took them off because I didn't want to risk it falling on the floor and the dogs licking it because pollen is um, poisonous to cats and dogs and they've stained my hands and short of bleaching them it's not coming off. I gave them a good wash but um, that wasn't good enough. quite like that one there with the white dots around it. The pus this Posca pen is by far the best of my set of pens today. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I hope um, you get some inspiration to go and do some flowers for Happy Mail.